How's it going everyone? It's me, it's Conchinsula, hope you're having a good day, and welcome to another Pokemon Go video! So, Niantic announced what all of the upcoming content is going to be in the month of November. There's a lot of new things to look forward to, and there's quite a few stuff you will not want to miss. I'm going to be talking about all of this in today's video, so let's roll the intro and get right into it. Okay, let's get right into it. So, the month of November is going to be stacked with new raid bosses, new events, and a whole bunch of goodies that you will not want to miss. We are going to see the long-awaited debut of a particular Ultra Beast, and a couple of events that were a long time coming. First, let's go over the raid bosses that will be appearing in 5-star raids. Between now and November 8th, we are going to have Origin Form Giratina. From November 8th until November 23rd, we're going to get Guzzlord in raids. And from November 23rd to December 1st, we will have Nihil Lego return to raids. Guzzlord is of course the brand new Ultra Beast making its debut, and this particular Pokemon was teased for a few months. That's pretty exciting if you ask me. The gameplay implications behind this Pokemon are not fully known at the moment, but it is said to be the tankiest Pokemon in the game with a whopping 440 base stamina stat. Once we find out what moves this Pokemon will have, we will then know whether or not it is worth farming up. Now in terms of both Giratina Origin Form and Nihiligo, it is pretty much a given that both of these Pokemon are worth going after. I made countless videos talking about the significance of Giratina Origin Form, but I will say, Nihiligo doesn't get enough attention as a solid poison type. You will for sure want to go for both of these Pokemon while they are in raids. Now, coinciding with all of these raids is of course going to be a few Mega Evolutions. Until November 8th, we are going to continue to see Mega Banet in Mega Evolution raids. From November 8th until November 23rd, we are going to see Mega Gyarados. And from November 23rd until December 1st, we are going to see Mega Houndoom. All three of these Mega Evolutions are pretty relevant, so it might be worth getting the Mega Energy from these raids. It will especially help you with whatever is the 5 star raid boss, as Mega Banette is a counter to Giratina, Mega Gyarados is a counter to Guzzlord, and Mega Houndoom, well, that one is actually not a counter to Nihiligo, so I guess do it for the Mega Pokedex entry. The raid hours during November are going to coincide with whatever the 5 star raid boss is on those dates. On Wednesday, November 2nd, we are going to have Giratina Origin Form. On November 9th and November 16th, it's going to feature Guzzlord. And on November 23rd and November 30th, we are going to have Nihiligo. If it turns out Guzzlord is not useful in any way, then this month might be a time to take a break from raid hours so that you can save up those raid passes for future 5 star raid bosses. Okay, now let's go over what the in-game events are going to be during November. From November 1st until November 2nd, we are going to have the Dia de Muertos event. This event is going to feature a brand new custom Pokemon and a whole lot more. I made a video talking about this event in detail, so go and check it out. On Saturday, November 5th, we are going to get the Dratini Community Day Classic. This is one you will not want to miss, as Dragonite is a fairly relevant Pokemon, and we will have a 3x Catch Stardust bonus. Next up, between November 9th to November 17th, we are getting the Greedy Gluttons event. This in-game event will be a tie-in to the debut of Guzzlord, so I expect many event spawns around the gluttony theme. This could include Snorlax, Slackoth, Slacking, etc. Now between November 14th until November 17th, we are going to have a Team Go Rocket Takeover event. This event is going to overlap with part of the Greedy Gluttons event, and it is one you will want to pay attention to. These Team Go Rocket events are when you can use TMs to remove frustration on Shadow Pokemon, so make sure you mark your calendars because you do not want to miss that. I would also suggest getting a whole bunch of really good Shadow Pokemon ready, because it could be several months until we will once again have the opportunity to remove frustration. On Saturday, November 12th, we are going to have Teddy Ursa Community Day, which is going to debut the Hisuian Pokemon Ursa Luna. This is looking to be a solid ground type attacker, so do not miss out on this event. Also, much like Dratini Community Day Classic, this one will have a 3x Catch Stardust bonus, so make sure you stock up heavily on Pokeballs for both of these events. On the weekend of November 18th until November 20th, we are going to have a Safari Zone in Singapore. Much like with the most recent Safari Zone, I predict we are going to have a shiny debut and something for global players who cannot attend the event. 
on November 23rd until November 28th, we are getting the Astro Eclipse event. This is likely the next phase of the Season of Light special research story, so I don't think it's going to be that impactful. I could be wrong, but we'll just have to wait and see. Finally, we are going to be getting a special mystery event on November 27th from 11 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. local time. I'm wondering what this event could be. It could be a special raid day, a limited research day, or something brand new. I'm curious what this could be, but I hope it ends up being exciting. So yeah, all of the events in November are pretty exciting to say the least. I do think at the very least the Team Go Rocket Takeover event and the Greedy Gluttons event are going to be the highlight. Hopefully Niantic gives us really solid events, much like what we had in October, because they have needed some positive buzz as of late. The spotlight hours might give us a hint at what the event spawns could look like. On Tuesday, November 1st, we will have Duskull wearing a flower crown as the highlighted Pokemon. On November 8th, we are getting Krogonk. On November 15th, we are getting Porygon. On November 22nd, we are getting Petalil. And on November 29th, we are getting Hoot Hoot. The 2 times Stardust bonus is going to be on November 1st, which is probably the day you are watching this video. Make sure you plan around this specific bonus, because it is a great way to boost your Stardust count. Finally, the Research Breakthrough Rewards will be a Starmie encounter along with a Star Piece during this month. This is pretty cool because Star Pieces are pretty useful as a premium item. So yeah, there are certainly a lot of things to look forward to during this month. The one issue that I have right now is that there are no good value bundle boxes in the Poké Shop. Even for the Dia de Muertos event, the boxes seem to have decreased in value even more. I think this trend is going to continue throughout November, so you may end up just not hatching eggs or doing raids during this month. That's quite a shame, because there is a lot of great content, but it looks like Niantic is once again shooting themselves in the foot by not giving players good value for their real money purchases. I hate to end this video on a bad note, but I do want to say it like it is. November is looking really good content-wise, but chances are most players will skip it because they don't have raid passes or incubators to use. But yeah, anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Now, I would love to know your thoughts regarding everything coming in November. Leave those thoughts in the comments, and let's have a great discussion. And if you ended up enjoying this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if it's your first time here. And don't forget that little bell so you can stay up to date on whenever I upload videos. And I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You make this channel content possible. If you want to support my channel in any way, big or small, then be sure to check out the links in the description below. For all my patrons, they get a permanent spot on my in-game friends list. So if you want to interact with me in some way, like with remote raids, then do consider becoming a patron on my Patreon. But yeah, that's going to be it. I'm Kanchinsula. Be safe, have fun, love yourself, and I'll catch you all later.